Hey guys, and welcome to the first of our off-season rebuilds. It's been a while since I've gotten on NBA 2K, but with the Warriors Raptors series coming to a close, I thought there's no other way for me to really simulate what will happen during the off-season, but to go through and see what will actually happen during the off-season. So the Raptors won four games to two, but the big story was the Warriors injuries. Kevin Durant, of course, we all know, suffered a right Achilles tear that's going to put him out for all of next season. But also, Clay Thompson tore his right ACL in Game 6. He was on fire, had 26 points before he went out in the middle of the third quarter. So this would be the perfect team to go over and see what will happen during the offseason. The only player they have under contract is Steph Curry, they have Draymond for one more year, Andre Iguodala for one more year, Damian Jones, and Jacob Evans. That is it. Kevon Looney, he's also out, but he's also free from his contract with a broken collarbone. They don't have that in 2K, so I put the vertebrae as the next best thing. But this is going to be a very interesting offseason. Kevin Durant is leaving, Boogie is leaving, Klay Thompson is leaving, and the majority of the Warriors bench, including Jordan Bell and Sean Livingston, the two biggest, probably role players that will be leaving this offseason. But let's go ahead and get right into it. We have our player retirements, Dirk, Jamal Crawford, Vince Carter, nothing of note. I'm going to go right through the league meetings. Good thing everything's rejected, and we're going to go through our draft lottery. So we're going to have to adjust this. I don't know, even know if we can adjust this to edit it for the correct draft lottery rankings. But either way, we're not really going to be impacted by the draft this year. So if anything, I'll just go through right to free agency. So the first big domino to fall, and that is Kevin Durant declining his player option. This is probably what's going to happen in the real NBA as well. Uh, we're also going to decline Sean Livingston's team option. At $8 million, he's not worth it. He really declined this season. But the big thing, KD will be going into free agency. That torn right Achilles, as you see, going to impact him for probably the next season. Probably going to be out for that whole season. So Kawhi declines his offer. So does Kyrie, Jimmy Butler, and KD. Al Horford accepts his the Julius Randle decline. So there will be a decent free agent class. Marcus Gasol is going to go back to Toronto. Uh, and John Collins will be going back to Atlanta. So we can go ahead right through our qualifying offers. We are going to offer them to all three. Alfonso McKinney did give them solid minutes in the finals. So we're going to try and get Jordan Bell, Quinn Cook, and Alfonso McKinney back. And now into free agency. This is where things are going to get very, very interesting, especially in the real NBA. The Warriors have a lot of cap holds. KD, they have DeMarcus Cousins, who is going to be a free agent. He, they're not really going to have a cap hold on him. So just to make it more realistic, I am going to release him from his cap hold. And I'm also going to do that for Kevin Durant as well. Uh, we are going to keep it on Clay because we're going to try and re-sign Clay. Uh, we're going to reject Sean Livingston. We're going to reject Jurebko. And we are going to... Uh, let's keep Kevon Looney as well. We're going to reject Andrew Bogut. Um, so we'll have Clay, Jordan Bell, Quinn Cook, and McKinney along with Kevon Looney as our cap holds. Just in case we want to re-sign them. But, let's see here. Clay should be down here somewhere. There he is. Uh, we do. We are going to try and re-sign Clay. I think in the best, best, the number one circumstance, KD will leave elsewhere or go back to the Warriors for the fact that they could not win the champ championship without him. But I don't think they're going to have the salary to do it. I think they would rather offer. Uh, well, I think they'd rather offer. Kevin Durant the max offer, but they also want to offer Clay, and they're not going to be able to choose both of them. We know that Boogie is going to be a free agent no matter what. They don't have the salary for him, but they do have the salary for either Kevin Durant 
or Clay Thompson. In this scenario, I'm going to stay with Clay Thompson and uh, re-sign him and nurse him back to health over the season. So they would still probably give him the max, five years, 160 super max for Clay at least. So we're going to offer Clay that contract. Uh, and then they really don't have any cap room besides that. Uh, so we're going to have to look at any possible trades that we can make to dump some salary. One of them being Andre Iguodala. He's made some clutch shots. He hit that clutch shot in game two, made decent defense, but is really not what he used to be whatsoever. So um, I'm going to try and move him off for hopefully a younger player or at least a first round pick. They are offering Steve. I don't understand why the Thunder do not value Steven Adams. And you know what? I'm going to try and make this somewhat realistic, but I'm also going to take what 2K gives me. And uh, I'm going to go with Steven Adams for Andre Iguodala and Jacob Evans. So now at least we have a big three. We're going to have Curry, Adams, and Draymond Green. So going back into free agency, we are still minus 20 on the cap room so we're gonna have no cap essentially so i'm gonna simulate a couple days we are gonna get clay back on that big deal holding these guys on that cap hold so let's simulate to the start of the initial day of free agency the majority of the free agents are gone let's take a look at where they went so kd is going to be a bit down in the mid 80s kevin durant Signs with Indiana. I have seen this scenario work out before where KD goes to Indiana. Uh, but I'm surprised to see it in this as well. Any other big movers on the free agent market? Uh, Kyrie goes back to Boston, surprisingly. That probably wouldn't happen in the real NBA. Uh, Derrick Rose goes to the Clippers. Uh, Wesley Matthews goes to the Grizzlies. Anything else big besides Kevin Durant moving like that? So the Knicks still have Mitchell Robinson and Dennis Smith Jr. We'll have to implement the trade. DeMarcus Cousins. The Lakers used their number one big salary offer on DeMarcus Cousins. So now LeBron, Boogie, Kuzma, Ingram, and Lonzo Ball will be the starting lineup. That is very interesting. Porzingis is still on the Mavericks. D'Angelo Russell is still on the Brooklyn Nets. Um, KD is now teaming up with Miles Turner and Victor Oladipo. And those are the three max contracts right there. Miles Turner, Victor Oladipo, and Kevin Durant. Still signs a three-year $113 million deal. Anthony Davis's contract will be up after the season. So some interesting stuff going on. And Kawhi re-signs with Toronto. Four years, $125 million. Some big stuff going on here. But uh, let's continue on. So, because our cap is so low, I think I'm actually going to let free agency work itself out and just move on to this second season. We're going to have to... So, we're able to get Quinn Cook and Kevon Looney back. Steph is getting older, so he's going to go down one overall. Draymond also goes down one overall to an 82 and uh, we only have seven players on roster. Three, four, yes, yeah, seven players on roster. Be it three of them are pretty good players in Clay Curry and Steven Adams, but Clay is going to be out for this entire year. And we're gonna have to see how the Warriors bounce back with no KD and no Clay because of injury for this upcoming season. So I could really not find any trade of value. No one would really accept any trade. For Draymond, so I guess we're going to have to stick it out with him and just let him go into free agency. That will clear up a bunch of cap space for us. Uh, but here is the team. Steph Curry, KCP, Omri Caspi, who used to be a warrior, Draymond, and Steven Adams with Damian Jones, Quinn Cook, and Mike James coming off the bench. Clay going to be out for the foreseeable future. Um, pretty much have him out for the rest of the year, I believe. So, yeah, he's got about the whole season left. I set it for about 300 days because that would be the estimated time. So he's probably not going to be healthy, at least until a free agency next year. So we're going to have to see how we do with this team. 
Uh, the Lakers now have Boogie. The Rockets are still around. Uh, the War, the Thunder is still around. So it's going to be a very interesting year. Uh, very interesting to see, see where Steph Curry leads his team without either Klay Thompson or Kevin Durant. So, uh, unbelievably, 48 games through the year worth 33 and 15. Absolutely on fire. Everybody is playing well. Let's take a look at the stats real quick. Steph Curry is back to his MVP form. 44% from three. He's averaging 31, 4, and 6. Steven Adams has really played well for us. He's shooting 65% from the field. 15 and 12, a double-double with a block and a steal per game. Omri Caspi, the 74 overall 31-year-old, shooting 41% from three. He's averaging 11. Contavious Caldwell-Pope is averaging 11. Draymond Green is averaging 10, 7, and 7. Still defensive monster, two steals and a block per game. Uh, just really overall solid play from our entire team. I mean, even our last man, Damian Jones, is averaging 7 and 4. So it is really a team effort here. Quinn Cook averaging 8 and 3. Uh, Marshawn Brooks, who used to be out of the league, averaging 9 in the game. It is a complete team effort on this place right now. It is unbelievable. Uh, he actually got is the league leader. He dropped 52 on December 22nd. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, but yes, I am very happy with how we're doing. I'm very surprised. We're only one game up on Houston right now, who James Harden is playing out of his mind. Uh, Minnesota is also right behind us. Carl Towns is... The Timberwolves are finally living up to their potential. Dallas with Luka Doncic and Kristaps are in the hunt. But the West, after the first three teams, has a gigantic drop-off. I mean, the Denver Nuggets are the fourth seed, and they're only three games above 500. So it's very, very interesting to see how weak the West is for some reason. Portland's 500. San Antonio with DeJounte Murray and the Marcus Aldridge is 500. Anthony Davis, the Lakers, unbelievably, are 21 and 27. I guess uh, some fake uh, locker room issues are hurting them. I mean, Lonzo Ball, LeBron, Kuzma, and Brandon Ingram, along with DeMarcus Cousins, and they're six games below 500. They're the, uh, that's four, that's eight, they're the tenth seed right now. Very interesting stuff, and the biggest surprise, the OKC Thunder are 19 and 30. Westbrook, Paul, George, they are really missing Steven Adams right about now. Let me actually see what Russell Westbrook is doing this season. Uh, this year, not much of a drop-off. Well, four less rebounds, four less assists. He's cut his turnovers in half, and he's shooting much better. 65% from the free throw line. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, here it is. Paul George averaging 21. That's a, He's dropped off in every single stat. His three-point shooting is much better. Uh, but just very interesting to see. Very interesting overall. Toronto, Boston, and then Orlando is back up. Uh, at the bottom is Indiana with Victor Oladipo and the injured Kevin Durant. Brooklyn is 22 and 25. So very interesting Eastern and Western Conference. The NBA is really upside down right now. I mean, the top four, five, six are normal, but then you have Orlando, Charlotte, Detroit, Atlanta, New Orleans, some very unique teams are doing very unique things. So uh, I'm going to simulate the rest of the season and see you guys at the start of the playoffs. We had a bit of a drop off after the all-star break. We ended up 50 and 32. Giannis, your MVP. Larry Nance, your sixth man. Giannis, your defensive player. Donovan Mitchell, most improved. And Mike D'Antoni, coach of the year. Steph Curry made the all-team first team 31 4 and 6 great year from him really propelled us along um besides that i'm not seeing any of the warriors ben simmons and joel Embiid, mike conley on that team and draymond nice making the all defensive second team so in the playoffs we're the number two seed facing off against new orleans remember they still have anthony davis 
and Julius Randle because they decided to re-sign him. Drew Holiday is still there, so that's a very, very good seventh seed to go up against. Houston is the number one seed. They're facing Phoenix, who's bounced back with a, an injured Isaiah Thomas, who's returned to Phoenix, Devin Booker, their rookie, and DeAndre Ayton with Justin Jackson, and a bunch of good players coming off the bench. On the East, Toronto, yet again, the number one seed. Uh, Kyle Lowry, same team pretty much. Pascal Siakam's improved, and yet again, they have that fantastic bench. Uh, Philadelphia, number two overall. Uh, they were able to re-sign all four of their major stars. We should be able to get past New Orleans in the first round. I mean, just by the way we've been playing, we're not as talented as they are, but we've just been killing it this year. So 2-1, hopefully they don't tie it up 2-2. Two -two. It's a series 2-2. Two -two. Back at home, we lose. And are we really going to get eliminated by New Orleans? We got eliminated in the first round. Uh, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Steph Curry has had so much usage this season. Probably the most usage in the NBA. Houston got bounced in round one by Phoenix is in the conference finals. Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. And then hopefully Minnesota Phoenix is... I don't know what I'm watching right now. Okay. Minnesota, Toronto, and is Kawhi going to repeat? Yes, he is. Kawhi Leonard wins back-to-back -back finals, back-to-back -back finals MVPs. Phoenix, my God, absolutely killing it. Isaiah Thomas really with amazing comeback. They crushed Houston, beat him by five in the last game. Not much scoring. Really surprising stuff. It's always interesting to see what happens with these rebuilds. Yet again, the Raptors win in six. But now we have a very interesting offseason to get to. Uh, we have a couple players uh, that are leaving, some bench players specifically, but we still have our big three. And I want to see where Clay Thompson is, is actually in his recovery. Uh, let me just make sure I'm going to reject all of these just to make sure. Uh, re league realignment, we should be fine. I've implemented the draft lottery, so we will begin. The Pacers, oh my gosh. The Pacers land the number one pick. The number one pick. So now they'll be able to pair KD, Victor Oladipo, Miles Turner, and the number one pick in the draft. We're going to get the 27th pick. Philadelphia from OKC, who apparently had a horrible year, gets the third pick. So, very interesting stuff going on here. Let me actually take a look at that mock draft. The Pacers are getting Zion. The Kings are getting RJ Barrett. And oh, I need to update this draft class because John Morant will probably go lower than expected. But still, this is some crazy stuff. Still got our staff, so we're good there. Uh, let's go through the NBA draft real quick and see who we can snag with that 26th pick. I'm hoping some talent is still left on the board. Uh, Mikhail Wheel Alexander, that honestly may be our best bet. Jonte Porter still around, PJ, ooh, PJ Washington, I may want him. I like Jordan Wara, he was uh, out of Louisville, solid small forward, can play power forward if we need him to. So I think I'm gonna go with Wara with our 26th pick. And we need to just go ahead and sign him real quick. Solid shooter. Uh, number 33 can play the small forward if we need to. So the Pacers get Zion. The Kings get Reddish. The 76ers get R.J. Barrett. So they really filled that hole in the shooting guard. The Wizards get Bull Bull. Where did John Morant go? John Morant went six to the Clippers. Very interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and sign Jordan Morris. 76 overall. Pretty good for a rookie. Uh, all the rookies are accepting their team options. No one of note. Harry Giles. No one really accepting uh, their player options. Qualifying offers, I'm going to offer to everybody. I don't want uh, Tyler Cavanaugh back. And we can keep the rest of them. Damian Jones turning into a pretty decent center. So, let's see here. The best unrestricted free agent is Julius Randle and then Montrez Harrell. Uh, and then a bunch of restricted free agents. I want to see who's under our cap hold. Just a bunch of guys. I'm going to let go of Kufus. Let go of Treak Black and Cap 
from uh, along with McKinney. And McKinney really didn't do anything for us last season. So we still have absolutely no cap room. Uh, so we're not going to be able to sign anybody. So I'm just literally going to let free agency work through again just to get role players around this team. So we get back two of our good players. Clay Thompson, with his injury, is now healthy again after a year, but he went down three overall to an 85. Draymond went down by a significant amount. So I think this is the year to move Draymond before we pay him that massive salary. So what can we get for Draymond? He's still an 82 overall, so we have to be able to get something. Should we get Jordan Bell back? I'm honestly thinking about it. It could be a pretty decent move. We could get Derek Favors. I would be in favor of that. Spencer Dinwiddie, um, TJ Warren. I'm actually really interested in this Derek Favors trade. We're going to give up a second round pick. We're going to get another young center. So I think we're going to do this. We're going to go get Derek Favors. Uh, he actually goes up one overall, so that's nice. He's on a cheaper deal. He's on a shorter deal. Uh, but we gave up a second round pick, which really doesn't mean much in the end. So let's go through and simulate to the next season. We have Clay back. We have Steven Adams. We have a new power forward in Derek Favors. So I'm hoping that we can have an even better season uh, and just see how Clay adjusts after a year off of uh, injury, off of such a devastating injury like that. Let me put in the 2020 draft class and we can move on to the next season. So the starting lineup for this season will be Steph Curry. We got, we signed Matthew Delvadova, uh, Quinn Cook backing him up. Clay is back. We'll have his KCP backing him up. Small forward, we got the rookie, Jordan Wara and Mario Hazonia. Interesting to see how Wara will play on such a stacked team like this. Derek Favors and Kuzminskis as our power forwards. And Steven Adams and Damian Jones as our center. So I'm liking this lineup. It's a solid lineup. I don't want Hazonia in. I want Wara. I want the rookie to get a lot of minutes. So we're going to bump him up to 29. And that will be the starting lineup. We have a lot of shooting. These three are pretty good shooters. Warren's a good three-point shooter. Derek Favors and Steven Adams, two big bodies inside. This is a better team than last season, but I have a sinking suspicion that they will not play as well as last season. So I'll see you guys uh, at the start of the playoffs. So 50 games through the season. We're 36 and 14. We're still... The Warriors always find a way. They always find a way to be competitive. Uh, everybody's doing pretty well. Everybody is up there overall, so that's always good to see. Uh, taking a look at the player's stats, Steph Curry, even better. I mean, he just gets better with age. It's unbelievable. 33, 5, and 9 assists. Maybe a career high for him. 50%, 44% from 3. Clay, uh, he is struggling a little bit. Uh, only 16 and 5 assists, but still not bad for a number 2. And he should be decent in this second half of the season. Steven Adams upped his scoring a little bit. 14 and 10 with the block and the steal. Derek Favors with the block and the steal. 13 and 9. I'm glad we traded for him. We needed another score on the front court. KCP with 10. Off the bench is only with 9. Nora with 8 and seven rebounds. Surprising coming from a guy that's only 6'7". Quinn Cook with six, and Damian Jones with five off the bench. So again, good bench scoring. I mean, four, four of our bench guys are averaging at least six to eight points a game, and Steph Curry is playing out of his mind. Looking at the league leaders, Steph is actually number one in points by a large margin, and then uh, James Harden, Giannis, Kawhi, and the rest of the usual suspects. Um, based off the standings right now, we're only a half game back of Houston. Uh, Chris Paul still kicking somehow. They also have, now have Frank Nilakina and got Kenneth Fareed back. Uh, OKC has bounced back this season. They now have Marcus Smart and their rookie that they drafted number one overall, Myers Leonard. Uh, Denver, any notable teams that are not doing well? The Lakers 
man, I don't know what's going on. This team should be at the top of the Western Conference. I mean, they have LeBron and DeMarcus Cousins. Those two alone should put them at the number one ranking. But they are literally the worst team in the NBA right now. That's actually shocking. Uh, New York, uh, not, nothing of note here. Number one, of course, is Toronto with Brooklyn pulling up right behind. If they keep D'Angelo Russell, they seem to be doing pretty well. Jared Allen now coming off the bench. Indiana with a healthy Kevin Durant. Now look at that big three. Victor Oladipo, Kevin Durant, and Zion Williamson. Absolutely unbelievable. Milwaukee is only two games above 500. Orlando tied with them. And uh, that is pretty much it. We're going to have to see what happens uh, with the contract extensions because I saw... Okay, good. Steven Adams, we're going to re-sign him to a three-year deal. And Steph Curry, we have him for two more years, I believe. Let's take a look at this contract. Two years at 43. I think we're going to try and keep him a little bit lower. Two for 60. And then that should be good. So we'll keep Curry at a much lower rate. So yeah, that's good. Once we get through that, we can drop Curry off by about $15 million, Save that cap space. And uh, we'll have a ton of cap space at that point. But I will see you guys at the start of the playoffs. And if anything looks like how we're doing now, we will be top four seed. So we do gain about five wins from last season. Steph is the MVP. Back to his third MVP trophy. 33-5-8. John Morant, Rookie of the Year on the Clippers. Serge Ibaka, sixth man. Giannis, Joel Embiid. And our very own Steve Kerr, Coach of the Year. Of course, Steph makes All-NBA first team. Uh, don't know if we're going to see any other Warriors on here. LeBron makes third team as the Lakers did not do very well this season at all. Uh, Zion, Bull Bull, the rest of them, of course. I was about to say, hey, our very own Jordan Wara makes All-Rookie second team. That's very nice to see. We are the number one seed, but we're going up against this Timberwolves team. That is very, very threatening. Uh, Philadelphia and Toronto, yet again, number one and two, except switched. Houston, number two, and the same, pretty much the exact same people in the Western Conference as there was last season. Uh, taking a look at the overall player stats. Steph, of course, with his, but Clay had uh, 17 and 4. Not the best season for him. Steven Adams finished with that double-double. And uh, again, the bench was just very, very good this year. Jordan Moore was 7-7 as a rookie. Very happy with that production. Uh, league leaders, Steph was up there. And then James Harden and Giannis. But we should beat this Memphis or Minnesota team. We have Clay back. We have Steven Adams to deal with Carl uh, Anthony Towns. Um, oh, we get... Gosh, we got... Bounced in game two. Steven Adams, 30 and 12. Man, they just had a lot of people scoring a lot of points. That's it. Clay needs to step it up if we're going to win this series. Minnesota takes game three, but we tie it up in game four, thankfully. We take game five, and we should close them out in six. There we go. So we will be facing Utah in round two, Philadelphia. All the top seeds move on except for Orlando and Indiana. The team that had Kevin Durant, Victor Oladipo, and Zion. Wow, they really struggled from the field. Boston was able to take them out. They now have Dennis Schroeder, Jason Tatum, and a new Irving. They have Gilbert Irving, who's the number 21 pick. Wow, very interesting team that Boston has become. But yeah, KD out of the playoffs in the first round. Very surprising. Against Utah, Donovan Mitchell is clearly the guy that we need to face. But we're also facing against our old teammate, Draymond. He's going to be very interesting to watch go up against Derek Favors. The two guys that were traded for each other are going to be going at it in round two. But we do have the firepower to beat them. And we should be able to take care of them in at least five games. Uh, start off 2-0 with some big win big wins. The Jazz crush us in Game 3. We do take Game 4, and hopefully, we yes, we do take them in Game 5, which I am not surprised. 
So we will be rematching the Houston Rockets from a couple seasons ago in the conference finals. Same exact team, same exact big three, Clint Capella, Harden, and Paul. But this time we have Derek Favors and Steven Adams to deal with them. On the other side, Philadelphia and Toronto both got swept. Excuse me, Toronto got one game. But Boston, Milwaukee in the conference finals. I'm surprised these two teams haven't been in the championship yet. Um, but this Houston team is going to be very interesting to deal with. We barely scraped by in game one. Game two, we come out with a more decisive victory. Game three at Houston, we take it pretty easily. And it looks like, oh, they do take game four. But it looks like, yet again, we're pretty easily going to be able to dispatch of Houston. Man, Houston cannot get past Golden State even in this simulation. We're going up against Giannis and the Bucks, the my original prediction for this year's finals. They only went 44 and 38, so we should be able to take them down. We take game two, and we are going to be able to sweep the Milwaukee Bucks. The Golden State Warriors have yet again captured another championship. Steph Curry. An unbelievable four games in the finals. Another finals MVP. Kevin Durant knocked off in the first round with Indiana. We took care of Draymond Green in Utah in the second round. And the Houston Rockets lost to us yet again. Uh, but guys, that will be all for this rebuild. I decided to go until I win a championship. Especially with a team like the Warriors. It's not going to take long. Uh, but it still took me a decent time to rebuild that roster. Uh, but it just proves that Steph Curry, even in old age, will still be a monster. I mean, you never lose your shot. Rick Barry, to this day, he tells you he can make 100 free throws in a row. Uh, same thing with Steph and Curry. No matter how old he gets, you still see that A-plus on that three-point shot. And you still see that A-plus with Clay Thompson. Four, three years later, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson are still winning championships. KD, on the other hand, left, went to Indiana of all places to join the Pacers. They're stacked to be one of the best teams in the NBA in the next couple of years. But for right now, the Warriors are still back on top. So thank you guys for watching. I will be doing more rebuilds in the coming days, specifically with some very intriguing teams like Toronto and Houston. So be sure to be stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe for those videos. And I'll see you in the Toronto Raptors rebuild.